there's a kid somewhere in Africa with an iPhone 8 that's making better videos than a guy with a red Komodo that spent $30,000 on production. This is the Techsploder podcast, conversations with tech professionals about being human in a binary world. Episode 20, Owen J.J. Stone, Odakta. Techsploder is made possible by the financial support of our patrons, like our newest patron, Deborah Pugh. If you like what you hear, head on over to patreon.com slash Jason Howell to support the show directly, and thank you for making independent podcasting possible. Hello, and welcome to the Techsploder podcast. I'm Jason Howell, and this is the show where I get to sit down with some of my friends in tech and get to know them on a deeper level along the realm of technology. And today's guest is no different, Owen J.J. Stone, also known as Odakta. This dude is multifaceted. He's a technology professional wearing many hats over the years. Owen is a consultant, he's a speaker, a web developer, and yes, a podcaster with a passion for all things technology. He's hosted several tech podcasts over the years, including DocTales and IQMZ Tech. I became a fan of Owen's with his countless appearances on the This Week in Tech podcast over the years when I was producing, I would bring him on as a guest. And oh, he is just super hilarious. And that's one of the reasons that I just really adore him. He's smart, he's intelligent. Oh, and he loves Philadelphia sports, <laughs> which he actually podcasts about on the Gritty Nights podcast. But at the top of the heap for me is really just the fact that he's wicked smart, He's always makes me laugh, and he's a perfect fit for this show. So let's get to it. My conversation with Owen J.J. Stone, also known as Odakta. Owen oh, J.J. Stone, Odakta, one of my favorites. So when I was producing Twit for as long as I was, you were always Prime one of my favorite day. guests. Primarily because for two for two reasons. One, you're super smart and your perspective is always a little different than I'd say the wide majority of people that would come onto the show. You know, they're kind of part of the the standard tech ecosystem and they'd kind of follow a certain path, which is not a bad thing, but you know, no. they were very wicked smart and everything. But you were almost guaranteed to bring a different perspective than most people that were on. And two, you always crack me up. I knew when I was when I was producing Twit and sitting in my office and you were on the stage or, or on the set or you know, on your camera or whatever, uh, that I was gonna laugh uh, quite a bit throughout the episode. So you make me laugh. That's why I love you. So I appreciate that. And I always appreciate you sneaking me in there because it's it Twitter is one of those things where there's so many the, the the reach is so great. I've met so many people. Oh, like yeah. I've been in random cities and towns and they're like, Are you a doctor? And so it cracks me because I'm Crazy. not the traditional journalist. I'm not the uh traditional tech person. Like I'm in the tech industry, mostly marketing and things like that, but I also do a lot of the tech stuff and social marketing and media and all that kind of thing. So it's funny because when I met Lisa, uh, we were at a party at South by Southwest, and it's the same thing like what you just described me as. I, I don't take compliments very well, but I appreciate you and I thank you. And <laughs> we were just talking, and she's like, "Man, you are you are smart." And I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, "And you're funny. Like you you're actually like you you make things that we're talking about fun. Like you're making these." This, she was so bored because you're in a yeah. South by South, you know, you're sitting in a conference and you're listening to people talk about the dumbest thing. And we were at the bar just listening to nerds talk. And I'm just basically regurgitating everything they're saying in a fun way. Yeah. And that's why she's like, I got to get you on Twitter. You got to meet Leo. You know who Leo is? I'm like, of course I know who Leo Laporte is. And that's why I got on Twitter. And that's why when everybody says, how did this guy get on Twitter? It's because yeah. I, I am so, somewhat smart. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you I, are. I play the Absolutely game, and I play the jokes a lot, but you know, I, I do know some things and I, I'm in touch with reality. The tech yes. bubble is real. Um, San Francisco is. is real and uh, it does warp the way people think about things and the way they have to go about their business. So um, I, I like being able to travel to, to there for work, travel to LA for work, travel to New York for work, and then come back home and hang out with the soccer moms and realize that 90% of them use Samsung's. <laughs> yeah, and ground yourself right back into reality again. Yeah. yeah, it's true. I mean, I'm surrounded by that world of of te yeah, the tech bubble. Although being in Petaluma, I think less so. Like Petaluma's enough on the outskirts of San Francisco and the the like South Bay and and all that that I don't see it as much here. But still, 
you know, I'm, I'm within the California tech bubble still to, to a certain degree. So I, I definitely fall victim to that. You, you brought up something about fun, about fun and technology. And that taps into something that's really been on my mind uh, very recently. The last couple of days, I've been thinking about this a lot. What do you think about the current state of technology from that perspective? Because when I think of, you know, being a kid, or when I think of, you know, early internet or whatever, like fun was always a part of my fascination and enjoyment with technology. And yet now I feel like there's there's such a huge like weight kind of weighing down technology. What What's your thought on kind of like, are people ready f- to, to get back into the fun tech zone <laughs> from so, this heavy weight that we're in? So I don't think there were ever going to go back to the fun zone again. Yeah. We are definitely living in a no fun zone and it's basically because the balance is out of whack. Right. So uh, let me sound like an old person back in my day, you wanted to talk to somebody, you had to get on your bike and ride across town and you'd see all the bikes in the driveway. And if you wanted to call somebody and their mom was on the phone, you heard a busy signal. So you knew somebody was home. You try to go over there. Then you get called waiting. And it's like, well, Oh, I'll just, call and beep them in and get me in. Now I know if Johnny's there, I'm not going to go all the way over there if Johnny's not home. And so I got three-way calling. Ah, I heard you talking about me. You said something about my dog and that you, you, people are snitching on themselves. And then you get now to the kids are just like, they're reading each other's text messages. They're in text threads and yeah. social media and Snapchat. And so all the fun has changed. So unless you're playing Roblox or Minecraft and you're at that age of technology being like a wonderment of a yeah. video game or a fortnight where you're doing dances and you're having fun. Everything after that starts going downhill really quick because you have too much power in your hand and there's mm-hmm. nothing there to stop you. Right. Um, yeah, you so said it, wonderment and the, at the core of that is wonder. And that's what I think is missing as we get older, as we get kind of more entrenched in what technology is actually capable of and how it works. That wonder is removed. Like I can, I can, I can point to this weekend actually, and had this really cool moment, uh, with my older daughter. She's now 14 where she, you know, we were just sitting on the couch and she pulled out TikTok and she's like, you and I are going to do some TikToks, dad. And she started pulling up, you know, all of these like meme songs that like, I've, I've maybe heard them once or twice, but she started kind of like instructing me, okay, on this next one, you're going to say blah, 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 blah. And we created like five or six and had it just such a good time. And when I thought about about it, I was like, okay, those are legitimately hilarious. But if I was to sit down as the old, you know, 49 year old dude and say, I'm going to make some hilarious TikToks, like the, the wonder would not be part of that equation. It would be, well, how can I make something really funny? And it would be out the window, you know? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's such a finite thing because now kids, like I said, it's so, it's too much power. Like hmm. when we were kids and if you would have gave, if we went back in time, and you had an Atari, and I put a PSP in your hand, you would lose your mind. Like, oh, completely. you would think I was a wizard. Like, you would mm-hmm. think that I was an alien life form. Now you give a kid anything, and they're like, of course it does that. Like, boop, 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 boop. Totally. Like, it is what it is, bro. Like, what? Do you, what do you, what's wrong with you? Like, of, why not? You hand them an old rotary phone, and their brain breaks down. Like, Durr! Like they can't yeah. connect. So it's it's almost the exact opposite when you have that much power because everything is made simpler and easier and more accessible mm-hmm. and more affordable. That's also a thing back in the day. Like I didn't have a Nintendo when I wanted to play Mario Brothers and Ninja Turtles. I had to go down to my cousin's house because he was the first person that I knew that had one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like. And that made it even more special because it was, you know, you, you didn't have unlimited access to it. You had to yeah. actually go through some effort to get there. Yes. And now yeah. we have in our pockets a device that can literally do that and a million other things, which is amazing on one hand. But on the other hand, like you said, it really takes kind of the specialness out of any of those things. It's like, oh, yeah, it's a Swiss Army knife. It does it all. Like nothing surprises me anymore. <laughs> and, I, and I love my cousin, but I had to be extra nice to him just so I can get some game time. You know what I mean? I had, <laughs> you had to go and play the game because it's like, hey, bro, this, this is my this is my Nintendo. This is my Mario. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I'll let you get a board. But uh, you got it. So it, there's so much different dynamics to what's going on, because like you said about sitting down and making a funny TikTok, there's a, I, I tell people all the time when they're like, uh, we we're talking about gear. We were talking about gear earlier and how, how good we look. I mean, mm-hmm, you know, obviously mm-hmm. we're handsome older men, but 
um, there's a kid somewhere in Africa with an iPhone 8 that's making better videos than a guy with a red Komodo that spent $30,000 on production. There is a kid somewhere in Africa who's getting more views and making better videos with an old iPhone than he is mm. rigged out. And that's because of creativity, mm. availability, because when you don't have everything, you find a way to make everything work for you. So mm. there's that dichotomy of like, man, you could do a lot now with a little. And again, that's where you're missing the wonderment. That's where you're missing the fun and the joy. We have too much access and power. It makes it hard. Yeah, no, that 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 really rings true. That's a, that ties into something else that I've thought of a lot, which is uh, in the in the kind of creativity realm around music, because I'm, you know, I'm a musician when when I find and make the time for it. But I've been doing this since I was a kid. And when I go back to some of the recordings that I made when I was first getting into music production and, and primarily like recording, like I had this four track audio cassette, you know, uh, multi track recorder. And I have all these tapes that I recorded at that time, all these songs and everything. I had no experience up until then of doing that. And so the music that I created then when I go back to it and listen to it, I'm like, you know, it's not very good, but it's really creative. Like I couldn't even, I couldn't even fake making that music now if I wanted to, because I just know too much because I'm mm. too experienced in all these realms and the like innate instant spur of the moment creativity kind of flies out the window. Uh, you know, that's what I had then, but now I'd be overthinking it. <laughs> Just so, too experienced, you know? Um, what, what kind of cars do you have at the house? What kind of cars does the family drive? Uh, we have a we have a gas guzzler and an EV. So we have a Toyota Sequoia, which is our like mountaineering vehicle, go skiing, camping, that sort of stuff that uh, loves gasoline. And then we have a Tesla Model Y that we got like three-ish years ago before Elon went off the deep end. So this is this see this is one of the things I don't like about you and I I, I know that everyone loves you and they come <laughs> on your shows and they see you in person I've done I've, I've I've made the mistake of tweeting that I love you and I miss you I text you happy birthday all these positive the mistake but, but here is the time when I someone's got to tell you right like okay all right. you're such a multifaceted talented guy yeah. why aren't you loading up the Sequoia sit in the back seat having a wife show for you around with the kids in the car and you just playing guitar in the back seat on TikTok. Why aren't you the Sequoia <laughs> guitar guy making millions of dollars? Why am I still working? I Why am I sitting here with you? You should be funding me for this idea and you should make it happen. You've got a very large vehicle. You've got a yeah. lovely built in family. They're on the internet. You should grab a guitar and sit in the back and play goofy songs and sing things. One of them goes viral. Next thing you know, you're on Ellen. I don't even know if that's a real show anymore because I don't watch regular TV. Right, but you're on right. one of these daytime yeah, talk shows, Good Morning America, and you're a sensation. But no, you're sitting here with an overweight dude in a black <laughs> box talking about technology instead of using those gifts on your back wall. Could we please get you doing some things that are useful? Let me talk to the kids. Kid. Where's the kid? I need the, well, the, the 14 year old. That's what I need to talk to. We're yeah, going to put that to work. Well, let's, <laughs> she's at school. Although she has been telling me, she showed me some of the TikToks again this morning. She's like, Dad, this would this would go viral. This would go viral, Dad. I'm like, Yeah, I, I doubt that. But maybe you know more than I do. I don't know. Well, I, well, I think she does. And I know that I know more than you do because, you know, <laughs> I know. yeah, it, it's the fun thing I try to tell my daughter because, so on a tangent, obviously, there yeah. was a time period where, um, obviously, you know, we're in the tech business and kids look at us like, you don't know anything, dad. And I'm like, okay, bro. Like I, I literally could go viral anytime I want to. And she's like, well, if you could do it, why wouldn't you do it? So I made a video and I was like, I guarantee you just have a million views by the end of the week. And she's like, what? I'm like, what do you want to bet? I, I bet her a whole lot of chores that she was very upset to do for a month because I okay. ended up with 4 million views on this video. And she's like, how did you do that? I'm like, well, remember when you were on TikTok and you were doing Minecraft videos and I got you up to like 300,000 followers and she wanted to delete it because all her friends at school were asking her to, to shout her out on TikTok. And she's like, I don't want to do this anymore. It's too much attention. So I yeah. sold that TikTok. I'm like, we don't delete it. We sell it. You know what I mean? I sold it for like five grand. I'm like, somebody will buy nice. this TikTok. But I told You're her very like, enterprising. I, I that's one thing I really respect. About yeah, you. I like nickel and diamond <laughs> things. There's all kinds of ways to make a little bit of money. But yeah, I, I she's like, well, why don't you do it all the time? I'm like, because to do that, I need to end up being the caricature goofy guy. Yeah. 
Yep. I don't want to be the dad that pours milk on his head every other video. Yep. I don't want to be the guy with the catchphrase that says dirt to dirt. Like, I, I just don't want to. I could do it. I could yes. be really good at it. I, I'm a funny person. I know what's funny, but I don't want to be classified in the thing and have to do the circus act of the same thing all the time. That's why I make my talking head videos about sports or technology or the podcast, because if one or two of them goes viral here and now, I've made those videos go viral, two and three million views. But it's about a conversation. I'm not going to be stuck in a corner as an Eagles fan saying, baby, baby, every three seconds to get on the news. Because that's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing that people expect from you. I mean, and that's that's honestly that's what came to mind when you were giving the wonderful. I'm not not saying it's a bad (laughs) idea, but the wonderful Sequoia, you know, back in the seat playing guitar while we commute to school uh, video idea. Because when I think about that, I'm like, okay, well, there's a possibility that something like that might work, but I don't want to be the guy that that's the thing that I do forever and ever until, you know, I burn out or whatever the case may be. We we get you out of Sequoia. We parlay it to bands and you start showing up live places and you know for that, but they're not asking you to drive a Sequoia yeah. into the yeah. club, brother. They're like, oh, that's the Sequoia guitar guy. Yeah. He's up on stage. How, where's the Sequoia? Like, no, we, <laughs> Doesn't we, matter. We don't need a Sequoia. We <laughs> got him. He's, he's still playing the guitar because we actually have a skill and a talent. That's, that's the difference. That's the difference. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's yeah. A, and I, I think about that because there's a guy who is um, homeless and uh, when he lost his home last year, he was he he was making music in his house, and then he had to start making music in the car because he got evicted. And there is a thing to where like because he was homeless and he needed help that more people followed him or whatever. But it also made him hone in on his music where he's like, "This is my escape. I'm in the car. Mm. All I could do is make music to give me something to do." Because he was obviously still working and trying to save up money for like hotel rooms and this and that. Sometimes from place to sleep. But he was like, "All I have to do in my free time is sit in his car and make music." So he did. So then he started recording it. Mm-hmm. Like you said, he also got better because he was doing it more often. For sure. Over time. Yeah. So there is there are multiple layers to it besides just being, I'm gonna do this in the car. It's a you have to have a skill too. You have to have mm-hmm. something. So um, yeah. 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 I probably would need to play these guitars a heck of a lot more before I launch that idea, to be honest. Because yeah, we got, we get, they are getting a lot of action these days. Oh, well, they're not. They're they're, they're they're a beautiful prop behind you now. We, they, yeah, we live in a whole different lifestyle now. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a different lifestyle. One thing, um, so, so for those who are unfamiliar with you outside of Twit, one thing you you do a lot, it seems, is you do marketing for other people. Where where does that skill set come from? Are you just is is that from your entrepreneurial mind? Because I consider you an entrepreneur. You know, you it seems like you have a lot of ideas, and you follow those ideas, and many times they're very unique. And you know, as with every entrepreneur, sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't, but. It seems like you're you're you've got a marketer's mind. Where does that come from? So, uh, fun story. If you have kids, just get rid of the kids. Um, when I was in high school, as like a junior, I believe I was, I did a sex survey, and it was a front and back survey. Fifty questions for girls, fifty questions for guys, and I passed it throughout the school. And everybody did the survey, and the survey was like. I got, in tr- I almost got in trouble. I signed my name in wingdings and one girl ratted me out and the principal called me down to the office and uh, they called my dad and they're like, well, uh, we know that Mr. Stone is the one giving out these surveys. Uh, we, 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 we need to, we need to do something about this. And my dad's like, what well, did you see him giving out surveys? No. It's like, all right, well, where are the surveys at? Well, we need you here so we can go check his locker. So you go to my locker. There's no surveys. And my dad's like, well, let me talk to my son. And he talks to me. He's like, you did this, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, that's your name and wing things? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, how'd you know that? Because my dad was a technology person. Uh, that's why I came into tech because my dad was, uh, I'm I'm O-Doc. And my dad, lovingly enough, changed his Twitter handle to Papa Doc in respect for his son. Um, love it. Love it. <laughs> but, uh, good dad. Yeah, good dad. And he's like, he's like, well, I know it's your name because... I, my name is Owen J.J. Stone, and the two wingding symbols in the center were double icons. So he's like, that says J.J. Stone, right? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right. The principal comes back in. He's like, well, you don't have any proof my son did it. He didn't do it. I don't care. Fast forward that to my senior year. Somebody has sent that to Maxim, and then Maxim started doing surveys online. And I got in touch with someone in their marketing department. And they're like, oh, make us surveys. And I'm like, sure. And they pay me a hundred bucks to make sex surveys. And I did that for like a year. And I'm like, man, they're paying me just to ask perverted questions. This is cool. 
And then you see it in Maxim. And I try to tell people that it was my idea. Nobody believed me. And I'm like, yeah. I don't care. They're paying me. And it's cool. So yeah. uh, that parlayed into learning how to code and making um, audio players and put them on MySpace and making uh, online games back when Flash was still a thing. And yeah. um, making those for small businesses and local businesses because they everybody wanted an audio player. Everybody wanted Flash. Everybody wanted Flash. As bad as it could be at times. Early on, it was pretty exciting. Back then, it was great. It was it was actually amazing. And uh, I I partnered up with uh, my still my friend now. He works for Lockheed Martin now, but he's super smart. He is oh man, Uh, teamed up with my buddy and he started writing more code for me because he was so much better than me. And we started Inquiring Minds Media, and we were making websites for people. And that's kind of how it started. And then that turned into marketing and development. And then social media came out. And it was like, oh, social media. And so we were we were doing all kinds of different things for money, from making audio players and video games for MySpaces for businesses, where you'd go in and you just re- uh, attention, reten- uh, attention retainment stuff, where it's just like, oh, anything to keep people on the page. And we would make custom things for people. So... Yeah, I was like, man, you're making money sitting at home playing games and listening to music. This is great. Uh, <laughs> so that that's kind of how the business part of it started. So I've been doing that since like 2001. Um, wow. So yeah, I, I, and we were doing all kinds of fun stuff. Like at that point, we that was back in. <laughs> we were still we were still in college. I actually dropped out of college. We were still in college. We were buying DVDs from Best Buy buying cd cloners and we were selling dvds at the school everybody came to us for movies we we're selling movies for five dollars a piece we were making money on top of money on top of money because we were the only nerds out here doing stuff so mm-hmm. the whole entrepreneurial thing you're right and i was always finding ways to like people didn't know how to do something oh i could do that and it's still that way today like people ask me oh what do you do and i'm like well what's the problem right like, tell me what your problem is because one or two things happens. Either I know how to do that or I know someone who can do it and I can point you in the right direction. A, mm-hmm. a lot of my business or job is diverting other work to other people. And somebody says to me like, oh, well, why don't you ask for a commission or something like that? And I'm like, whenever I do that, it comes back to me. Because if I give someone else work for something I can't do, when they think of me, they'll think of yes. me finally and say, well, he might, he could do this. Let me give him this. So... I, yeah. I've lived my life that way, and it, it's it's worked out. Knock on wood, pretty much okay. So that's smart. That's um, super smart. That's a that's a smart yeah. kind of process. Um, you know, direction to go in to to have the foresight that maybe maybe there's a long term or a long tail to this. I think a lot of people have short term thinking when it comes to something like that. And I and I just like being adaptable. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I'm not, I don't like to just throw out the whole, I've got ADHD or whatever, but I do get bored doing the same thing. Like mm-hmm. I do photography, videography, uh, website development, like all the things I do, but sometimes I don't feel like shooting the pictures and I'm like, Oh, here's a great photographer. He'll do it for you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then the, the same thing, they'll come like, yeah, I need a second shooter. Oh, sure. No problem. You know what I mean? So it's, it is a basis of, I like doing multiple things. I like doing different things. And uh, it, it keeps me interested in the things that I am doing. And it also keeps me working with good people. I, I've I've been very lucky that I haven't had too many bad clients or people that I didn't like or haven't had repeat business from or haven't wanted to work with again. Mm-hmm. Um, one pro tip for business people out there in the world, when you're doing consulting work or, or, or marketing and things like that, sometimes having your name on it doesn't matter as much as getting the work done. I, I would always be like, oh, well, you could take my name off of it for twenty percent. So how that works out great for yeah. me is that if the campaign goes great, that company gets to take credit for it, right? And they're like, "Oh, well, we did that." But if they want more business, they'll come back to me knowing that they'll get to keep the credit. Yeah. And if it goes bad, because you know so I'm not perfect. Sometimes, well, again, what I think is funny might not be funny or might not work. If it goes bad, hey, my name's not on it. So <laughs> I don't, I don't have to do that. And, and I got the little commission on top of it too. So it does work out. There you go. Both ways. And I tell people that right up front. So I'm like, if it, if it flops, you know, don't, don't, don't try to put my name on it afterwards either. So. <laughs> All right, real quick. We're going to take a quick break and come back with more with Odokta. You, you mentioned your dad and being kind of like a positive technology influence. I'm curious to hear a little bit about that. Did, did he, um, 
did he kind of expose you to technology when you were younger? And if so, like, what did, what did that look like? So, um, everything that like, you know, about me, which is not ugh, the world, but in general, everything you would say about me or think about me, I'm exactly like my father, my father and really? I are the same person. Papa um, doc. Papa doc. I, <laughs> I, 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 I tried to explain to my daughter the other day. I said, she's like, Oh, my friends think I'm so funny. I was like, yeah. Cause how many of my jokes are you telling? And she's like, I don't use your jokes. And then I waited like a week. She tells me a story and I'm like, Yes, that sounds similar to like stuff that I say. <laughs> you're laughing at my jokes and you're just giving it to new people. And I said, don't be mad. I was like, because I did the same thing. You know what I mean? Like my dad was the kind of guy when my friends would come over, he'd make me get up and go make him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich just so we could say, what did you do? Go to China to make the sandwich? It took you so long to make the sandwich. Like he would bust my balls in front of people. So um, I don't get asked about this a lot. And, I, and I'll tell you, um, my dad was like, when I was younger, he was in the Air Force and uh, he was a tech guy, kind of like he loved music and he always had like the latest tr- player and he always had a fancy car and he had an Atari before anybody else had an Atari. That was mm-hmm. the first thing that I remember. The 2600, then, I'm assuming. Yes. And yeah. then there was a time period where he was, uh, again, in the Air Force, single with me at two years old. And my grandfather said, you're a single man. He shouldn't be living on the base. Give me your kid. I went to go live with my grandparents for like six or seven years till my grandfather passed away. Mm. I go move back in with my dad. My dad's got a new family. I live with them for like four years. This is cutting through to get to technology as quickest way possible. Hmm. Then my dad, in the four years when he came back and got me, he was fine. But at the end of that, he got into a car accident. And he got hooked on drugs. Mm. He went to jail, quit cold turkey in jail. He apologized for going to jail. And he said, when I get out, I'm, ne- I'm never going back to jail. I'm not, I'm not going to do this again. And I had to go live with my aunt. And while he was in jail, he signed up for a program. Before this, he was a mechanic. He was an engineer in the Air Force. So he fixed jets and planes and he was on aircraft carriers, stuff like that. But mm-hmm. he hurt his hand in the car accident. That's what got him hooked on the painkillers, which turned him into having getting drugs. Yeah, yeah. He was like, I can't work with my hands anymore to fix engines or cars and stuff like that. Like my hands don't work that way. So he got into a technology program in jail in the halfway house and he took a computer class. He passed it and then he went out and went to like IDC tech or whatever it was. And uh, he aced that and some company gave him a job right out of that school while he was still in the halfway house. And he started working at a computer plant. It was actually called copy doc. And then next thing you know, I'm getting home built computers you know, I had I got my first Tandy. I was the first kid in high school. I had the electric typewriter. So everybody's coming to my house because you could actually see what you're typing. Yeah. So you could actually like edit it. So that's back Before when typewriter- you hit enter and then it prints out the last line or whatever. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody yeah. else has had a regular typewriter. So they're like, oh, man, you got this. And then um, a year after having that and everybody coming over, my dad built me a computer. And uh, it, was, it was like an old Tandy or something he hooked up. And again, when you when you have a computer and nobody else has one, it's mm. freaking cool. You got to dial yeah, up. Absolutely. I can only do three things with it. I'm trying to figure out what I can do, what games I can play. And then after that, it was every year I got a new computer for my birthday. And um, and was he, it built by him like every was, year? Like was, with, that was part of his he, job was building these these machines. Yep. So yeah. he, he spent he spent like uh, two years at that job. Then he started his own business and he just was working at schools and other companies and he would build schools, computers, he would build businesses, computers, uh, he would build them for churches like that. Uh, never went back on drugs, worked mm-hmm. for himself. Again, he would, uh, he moved to North Carolina. He would come up and see me. He would come spend a month or two at a time. And I'm like, man, it's nice to be able to work for yourself. You can just take off work whenever you want. Cause his clients <laughs> yeah. love him. He was a great, I mean, like I said, like when I say like uh, everything I am, he is like yeah. when we go out, like we would, Kill like we, it's like a walking comedy show with the both of us there. But you know, he, he <laughs> would just get to do what he wanted. I was like, man, people love him. Like he could leave work for two months, and people would wait for him and wouldn't let anybody else touch their computers but him because yeah. they were so loyal to him and how he was. And I was like, that's that's what I, he actually ruined me for school because I was going to go to college. I was in the middle of college, and I just started seeing him more and more do his own thing. And I'm like, I'm not going to school anymore. I'm going to go travel. And he's mm-hmm. like, what? I'm like. I got an opportunity to go to China, to Germany, like uh, places. And, and I just like, you know what? I'm going to go travel. And when I come back home, uh, I, 
I want to try to do my own thing. I tried to go down to work with him for a little while and I learned a lot. But at the same time, it was that whole, I'm a young man. You're my dad. I don't have to listen to you kind of thing going on. And yeah, I of course. Better. So that lasted for like a year, but I did learn a lot. Like I said, I was with him building computers, putting stuff together. Um, and it, it just made me learn so much about not only just putting things together, but the relationships that you have. Like mm-hmm. back then it was, you went down to your little computer store and you had guys that were buying stuff in bulk and you'd have a relationship where it's like, okay, you know, let me get this and that and bundle yep. together. And then they'd be like, oh, well, you're building these. Ma- let me give you a deal. And I'm just watching mm-hmm. him work his magical people and people being so happy with the service he's doing because when you call tech support back then, it was like, man, he was funny. He was fun. He made everything about computers fun. And I was like, I, you know, I could do that. And so, like I said, it just parlayed into other things for me where I, I had a different kind of interest, but all my interest of that came from him. And that mm-hmm. came from him having to find something else to do. He's like, I was a mechanic. He's like, it's easier to put in a motherboard than it is. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? He's right. like, my hands don't work. Anymore. I can't I can't work with like, you know, I'm in an engine. He's like, but working in a computer, like, oh, yeah, I'll snap in some memory. Like, what is this? This is yeah. nothing to me. It's so, still assembly. It's still, it, it's still assembly of some sort. And it's still mm-hmm. the same kind of mind process, which yeah, is what right. he loved the most about it because you're figuring out what it is. Is it the power supply? Is it a is short? It here or there yeah. in the sequence? Or is there a whatever? pin missing in this? Yeah. So it was all kinds of things you just get to learn. And um, he was he was the first. He got me my first Mac, and he was upset about it. Um, <laughs> now was it now was it a Mac or was it a like a a, 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 a what? Are, why am I suddenly blanking? A, a a built Mac that he put that he built himself. You know, so a clone. He, there's, he, there's the word. He always made Hackintoshes. He would never. Hackintosh. He yeah. never bought a Mac uh, until he bought me an iMac, like the first iMac that came out. Yeah. Um, and he was like, because again, he he literally from ninety six to damn a, a, almost till my daughter was born. So like fifteen years, sixteen, seventeen years in a row, I got a new computer every year for my birthday. Every year I got, Amazing. and he would just take the old one back and sell it to somebody else because it was still a year yeah. old. Yeah, it was just um, a year old, totally yeah, a year old. So uh, he would, he, yeah, he was making himself Hackintoshes. And I think it's like right when I was like really getting into photography and um, I had a DSLR and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, say, I'll just try these. This is better for, you know, your photography. And it was, it was faster. And the Mm -hmm. screen, it was really about the screen. The screen was so beautiful compared to like the stuff you were buying. And it was just all in one and I could grade it. Yeah. Yeah. I could pick up everything and take my monitor with me, which was, you know, not, and it was more powerful than a laptop because you always always had laptops, but Right. Yeah, he he uh yeah, he, he he it took at, it was like 2 years after that that he got finally got himself a tower but he never he was just making hack and tash all the time. He's, like, he's always calling me, "Look, look, it's the same thing. It's got more power though. Look at it." I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, but what doesn't work?" He's like, "Well, right now, this 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 and this this don't work, but everything else is working." I'm everything like, is great. Do you really need those things anyways? I mean, seriously. Right? Come like, on. We don't have any sound, dad. You can't play audio in here. Like, what are we doing? Get everything else. <laughs> look how fast it is. Like it's they, they couldn't make anything this fast, you know? So it was it was uh that that was that's a good memory that's funny but yeah he was, he, was awesome. mr. he was mr hackintosh he's like he's like, oh. I, i'm never buying app i'm never spending my money because when you build something it's, it's still to this day i got a mac studio over there yeah and um i do all yeah, my I editing well. on it yeah yeah i do all my editing, editing on, on it right now and i love it and it's great but i also have this friggin seven series amd thread shredder and it's still amazing like i do all my production stuff on here like my camera and everything else is on here Mm -hmm. because it just works and i can plug everything into it just works yeah Yeah. i can plug everything into it like my studio i'm like i got the extended base on there i got them it's just it's a different workhorse different different uses Mm -hmm. so and i built my daughter pcs like she has a mac laptop and an iphone that's about as much as she gets but um now does she does she know also how to how to build a computer? Has she I have kind of sat with you on that? As a father. No, I have well, I, I certainly haven't done that either. <laughs> so here I, I she so does, we have failed as fathers. She, yeah, she did care, but my thought process was is like computers are so cheap anymore. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I was 
I've got a tower in there right now that I'm about to sell to my friend. And it's only because I'm an idiot because I should have just told him to buy something and would have saved myself time. The only thing he's mm-hmm. getting better is hard drive and more memory with me because they always try to rip you off on those two things. For sure they do. Yeah. But he could have he could have went to Best Buy and got that same system built. You know what I mean? Uh, the, again, the hard drive would have had more fluff on it. You know what I mean? It wouldn't have been as a clean install. There are a few yeah. benefits to having that. And especially with a kid, like she plays the Sims and the Minecraft and the Roblox, stuff like that still, even though she's 17. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't have, I don't have any bloatware on there. And that that's the biggest thing about it. I'm like anything else you can go buy this thing. You don't need to learn how to do it. What, what I have taught her how to do is um, I've taught her photo- for, I'm teaching her photography right now. So she has a, a very small, Canon R50 DSLR and a 35 millimeter lens. I'm teaching her how to just shoot um, at, and outside of her phone because as a teen, she, she like I said, there's oh, kids, in, there's kids in Africa the out here. Your, your kid cries, shoot better stuff the weekend. A lot of stuff they shoot, they know. So she's learned editing and all that kind of stuff just from having her phone and doing that. But I was like, mm-hmm. okay, now you need to learn how to use an actual camera. You need to learn mm-hmm. settings, ISO. Like, it, just trust me, you just need to know it. So I have done that. But, um, as far as the building of computers, I have not, but I have told her and taught her what matters most memory and space. Mm. And you does know. she, does she enjoy technology like in this kind of modern, more modern paradigm? Is she, would, would you consider her a technology fan in the same way that you were when you were younger? I would consider her a Renaissance person. She's weird. She shops at thrift stores like she listens to all of my music. Like when I like, Oh, you should check out Nirvana. She's like, okay. I play her like one Nirvana album. Next thing I know, I'm looking at our playlist and she's downloaded every single Everything. album. And she listens. Oh, that's to all awesome. Of it. Like that's the other so day. Great. Yeah. She was the other day. She was wearing an outcast shirt. This shirt I know is 30 years old. And I'm like, where did you get this shirt? And she's like, Oh, I saw it in a thrift store and I bought it for $2. And I'm like, Okay. Like, <laughs> all right. So she's very, very vintage uh, yeah, in her mindset great. about that stuff. And she she uses technology. She likes technology. She understands it. Um, she knows how to get around it. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. So it, it, but it's not her. It's not like how I was. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Wonderment, bro. It's too too much accessibility. Like she has it in the palm of her hands. Like I, she knows more about Snapchat now than I do. And I, and I try to teach people it for work. And I'm like. Hey, let me check on my kid. What is Snapchat? <laughs> Why is my totally. Snapchat? Like, I, th- I, it was like two or three months ago. I was trying to show a girl how to use um, Snapchat, and I was trying to show her something on Instagram. And it just so happened she has Android. Now I'm primarily iPhone, but I do have Android test phones. And I guess they did an update that week because I picked up her phone and I'm trying to tell her how to. And I'm like, what? Why are all the buttons backwards? Where's the? This isn't how it's supposed to. And I felt stupid. I felt like an idiot. I'm like, I'm sorry. Just give me like two minutes to look look through this. And she's looking at me like, I don't. I was like, she's like oh, yeah, it updated last week. I'm like, okay, okay. Because I'm telling you, this is not how it used to look. And right. they changed everything. And I was like, it, just that quickly, you could be out of the loop. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, I, like yep. Especially not using Android every day. When something changes, like if it happened an iPhone, I would have saw it immediately. Yeah. Yeah. I've had to uh, definitely had to enlist my daughter to kind of explain some of the UI of of uh, Instagram, especially and you know TikTok. Uh, they they kind of have their little or, or Snapchat. Sorry, um, they they have their little secret language that you know. And and actually, I was just noticing the other day watching her kind of maneuver through through the UI, and it's total second nature. I'm sure she and her friends have all talked about these things, or or it's just intuitive to them. And because I've spent so little time on there compared to Twitter or threads or whatever, you know, I'm just, I'm not part of the, the gang anymore. I'm not, I'm not part of the crew. Do you just police it. the internet in your household? Like their devices? Police them. Well, are you, are you, are you, are you kicking open the door randomly on a Tuesday at three 30 and saying, give me your phone and going through it? <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Um, not not explicitly in the way that you're describing. We we talk about it a lot, and we do talk about kind of all, you know, and we have for years about the things to 
watch out for the you know a, a addiction to technology and kind of the 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 feeling of the need to be on it and the kind of the hooks that they put into there um you know some of the foibles of of private messaging and everything we have a very open conversation with especially our older daughter our youngest daughter she's 11 she's still doesn't have an iPhone you know so we we've kind of got her still restricted to a certain degree um but we have some of these conversations with her too but especially with our 14 year old it's a very open conversation and i'd say to this point we haven't been met with a moment where we feel we need to not trust what we're discussing with her at the same time we do have the access and she knows that so we have the access we've rarely needed to use it but every once in a while yeah um you, you seem like scared straight i mean you know, I've, I, not, yeah you've, you've yeah, seen it I'm like it. you've never watched it right so yeah. I, I i've i've put my daughter through a scared straight program when it comes to the internet she's had a phone her own phone since she was six um, that's the, the dichotomy of growing up in a separated household. Sure. Um, I just wanted my own line of communication um, mm -hmm. until this last phone for eight years. She's never dropped or lost a cell phone, which I could say is mm -hmm. better than most adults. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and okay. uh, and so uh, as far as the phone's concerned, even with all of her friends, which they trust me explicitly, so many parents are shocked. Like I can, like when I was coaching her team and the girls would be in the dugout with their phone, I'd take their phone and just take them out of their hand and just walk away with it. And parents were like, she lets you take her phone? And I'm like, yeah, I told them don't have it out in the dugout. Like She's like, I can't take her phone. I'm like, what do you mean you can't take her phone? You pay for the phone. It, it, totally. I was like, now, now these kids know that too, I'm not going to be like looking through their phone. Or if I did see something, I'm not going to be like, oh, my God, I know you're kids. I get it. So my daughter knows, like, I'll take her phone out of her hand and go look through her phone randomly. I don't do it so much anymore because she is older now. But when she was younger, one time a guy was sitting there trying to get her to uh, uh, sell pictures of her feet to him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I was like, when somebody says something like this, like, what do you do? And she's like, oh, I blocked him. I'm like, well, next time bring it to me so I can send him fake pictures of feet, take his $500 and then report them and then block them. Now we got to get the money for it. Right? Yeah, we got to get the money for it. We can't just be out here. He got to learn a lesson. This guy's back to the learn. enterprising aspect. Hey, <laughs> this man has to learn a lesson. You creepo. Um, well, that's true. Hey, that's a, that's a valid point. If you, you know, suddenly yeah. he's out $500 yeah. and he's got yeah. pictures of your feet. Oh, yep. I, th I taught that's, a, guy that's a different story. I taught a guy a lesson. He learned, he learned a day. Oh, uh, that day anyway. But, um, so, it, it it's amazing to me how many parents don't know what's going on with their kids and mm. good kids. Like my daughter's got good kids, good friends, whatever. I, I would just, and I, and I get this from my dad. I used to have a journal. My dad used to sneak in my room at night and read my journal. So he act like he wasn't reading it, but he would mm. read it and he would read it at night because during the day I'd hide it. But at night I have it in my room. He'd sneak in my room when I was dead asleep. I caught him one time. Like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm reading a little notebook here. So anyway, I'm going on my daughter's phone and it's two o'clock in the morning. Hmm. This girl's messaging her, all this kind of stuff. Now she happens to be the daughter of like one of my best friends. And I'm like, didn't you say she keeps being late for school? She was late getting up for school like two times last week. I'm like, hey, she turns out I know why. Yeah. She's up <laughs> in the middle of the night on her phone. He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, bro. He's like, oh, she goes to bed. I was like, two o'clock. Like, I'm just telling you she's on her phone. And he had to like tell her, like, hey, leave your phone outside the room because most yeah. parents don't check up on their kids and they don't mm -hmm. see what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, there's kids out here. And I'm I, I'm literally telling her, yo, tell your friends to stop posting this stuff. They're trying to apply for colleges and go to school. And they yeah, think Snapchat is a hidden secret place. Screen recordings. They're using double phones to record. And she's like, oh, I know. Not, and I know that you know. But I'm like, we know this kid. This is a good kid. He's a moron right now. Like, tell him to stop this. And so and sometimes she would tell him and some kids would listen, some wouldn't. But I'm like, it's amazing to me what kids are out here doing on these phones. Hmm. Like, self-incriminating. And I'm like, and again, generally good kids. None of these kids are out here, you know what I mean, doing anything crazy. But they have, again, so much access and so much power and so yeah. much power look at me, I'm cool. And I'm doing this. And I'm like, well, this is ability isn't to reach cool. the world immediately. It's yeah. yeah it's, it's so yeah. much bigger than we had when we were kids. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you messed up, you were the town drunk, you mess up here. You're the town, you're the town meme for a year. 
Yeah, like not potentially. Only just, yeah, potentially. That's a label that follows you around because you were a yeah. successful meme doing yeah. something horrible. Yes. You know? Aren't you the guy? Aren't you yeah. the guy? Oh God! Yeah, Don't. it's uh, yeah, oh. yeah. It's just, just, just kicking the door every once in a while. Just, just shake her up. Yeah. You, know I mean? you, you ain't got to terrorize. Just randomly on a Tuesday, be like, yo, let me check your phone real quick. Just, you, you know, you gotta rattle phone. the ground a little bit. How many emails you got? <laughs> Wait, you, know, I email? you sure? You sure? You sure? Like, you just gotta, yeah, yeah. You got to check them for them. We do ensure that the phones are kept out of the bedroom. And um, so, you know, downstairs is the place that they are kept. We I, have a little I wish charging I station. That, That's the one thing I didn't do because, like, she, <laughs> she's listening to podcasts when she goes to sleep and music and all that kind of stuff. And, again, I, I – I didn't even think about the whole being up at night. Just no, just, you know, like you said, having the access, like her friends messaging her and she's asleep. And I asked her, I'm like, are you up at night? And she's like, on the weekends I am. So she's used to just talking to me. And I'm like, and I could see that she wasn't answering her, but I'm like, man, she's messaging you a lot at night. Like, and she's bored because nobody's up. And she's one of the kids that has a phone. I'm like, okay, all all this stuff starts making sense to me. But I was like, if I would have just had it, I, I keep it separate with so many other things. Like you can't do it in the car, which now she's driving, which makes mm-hmm. me feel so much better about her whole life. Like her friends would get in my car and she would tell them, Oh, you can't use your phone while my dad's driving. And they're like, what? He's like, "Yeah, hey, we don't use the phones in the car while he's driving. And then they would tell their That's parents, good. he would like, use my phone. And I'm like, yeah, because we're driving. So it's just an automatic yep. thing. We're in a car, no phones. We listen to the music. We talk to each other. When I, yeah. when I'm at, when I'm at the grocery, I'm not an Uber driver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if we're, and if I'm sitting in the car, and we're waiting like in the parking lot or something. Yeah, get on your phone, hop on your phone. But when the yeah. car is in motion, no phone. So now when she's driving, she even tells her friends like, "Hey, don't I don't want to hear TikToks blaring in my ear while I'm driving. I don't want to yeah. be distracted by that. Like, you know, we'll listen to music together, whatever. But don't do that. So she's just programmed to do that one on her man. phone. Oh, it's it's. Yeah. I used to have comic books in the back seat, and her and her friends would just read the comic books while we were driving. Like give them mm. something to do because you know sometimes they don't want to listen to music, but mm. it was just so funny because when they got older, she would just check them like, "Hey, you can't use your phone in my car," and they kid the girls would hate it. Yeah, how girls are because they they want to be texting each other in the back seat instead of talking out loud. They want to mm-hmm. text about whatever they want to talk about, and I'm like, right. No, no phones in the car. Because believe me, history has shown that there is plenty of time for you to check that stuff on your phone. <laughs> it's like <laughs> literally every other minute is the time, apparently. Yeah. But yeah. there, that's a really great habit. Like that, that kind of reminds me of just like the, you know, it's it's a far less issue now than it was even when I was a kid. But the the whole habit of wearing a seatbelt when you get in a car, there was there was definitely a time there where a lot of people just were not in the habit of that. And that was a hard habit to to commit to. In my family, from day one, it was always a thing. So it was never an issue. Like, it's never been a thing throughout my life because it's just the way it's always been. If you make that kind of, you know, bring that over to the phone while driving, that's a really great habit to instill. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah, no, no phone at the dinner table, no phone in the car. Yeah, that's, like just that's certain, when we just, do. Just certain things that just make you put the phone down. Uh, yeah. so again, when you watch kids and they're just like raging out because you're taking their tablet away from them, I'm like, that's bad parenting. You post them mm-hmm. on the internet to make them look like bad kids, but you're the one that gave them their children. They didn't buy it for themselves. They don't right. have the internet. Like you're all the things that you're trying to shame these kids online for. I instantly think about bad parenting. I'm like, yeah, the You've kids, established the kids, a dependency of some yeah. sort. And the kids yeah. throwing a tantrum. Okay, cool. The kids are punk, but uh, we, it's not his fault. It's not their fault. Mm-hmm. It's your fault. You're the adult. Like, yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. Um, yeah. Yet, right. And also, and also at the same time, parenting in the digital age is really, really difficult. It is difficult because of the access. It's difficult because of the, um, just, just how, how much of life is built around technology. There's so many Karens on the internet telling you how to be a good parent. How hard can it be? <laughs> There's advice around every corner. I I, oh, ra- sure. I rarely do my podcast, Raising a Ninja, um, and people love it. Like, let me tell you something. I, I, I think I've only done like 13 or 14 episodes of this, but I yep. didn't do one for like four years. I put an episode out. It got more traction than the stuff I be doing with my tech stuff, and people just want it. And I, the only reason yeah. I, I, I waited is because I just wanted to graduate high school. I don't want her to have to deal with like the punk kids in school or somebody who doesn't like her because we talk crazy. I talk crazy. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, she wants to tell her little stories. So I'm like, look, I'm like, I, I've like i I've not done it for so long because I don't want a Karen or somebody outside making something go viral. And then you're viral for this kid being the suddenly here 2 o'clock at yeah. night Insta girl or whatever. So I just haven't done it. But yeah, I, I can't wait to tell people how to be a good parent. I'm going to write my book, How to Raise a Ninja. I'm going to tell people. What I know. It'll wrong. be I Raised a Ninja. I Raised a Ninja. That's right. She's great. <laughs> And look, I can prove it. She ain't dead. She ain't killed nobody yet. If she yeah. murdered somebody today, it's off my watch. She's 18 now. You know what I mean? I did yeah, my part. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be one of those people to tell people how to raise their kids and do well, it right. It, it's obvious from the outside looking into your life and the ways that you ha- you know do choose to share your life and, and your relationship with her and everything that you are, a, you are an awesome parent. You're an I'm, awesome dad. I'm trying my That best. is obvious. To be like you minus three thousand. You got too many kids, though. So, you know, I only got the one. She driving me crazy. You know what I mean? Anymore, I, I had have two, two of her. I had two of her. Hey, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> double if I doubled it. Doubled it. Yeah. <laughs> double it. Yeah. Hey, look, look. After two, you might as well have sixteen. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's you and the oh, wife. Boy, no, I don't know about that. You said you chance to survive. You know what I mean? It's. <laughs> It's only one, I'm single now. It's only one of me. I can only have one kid. If there were two of them, they dumped me. You see what I'm saying? I, they came up on your boy. So, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I appreciate that. It, it, it's it's funny because like we've known each other so long and it's like a weird dichotomy because of how the internet works, right? Like mm-hmm. we don't live anywhere near each other. We actually mm-hmm. have never really like gotten to hang out a lot in personal interactions other than like at the at Twitter right, office or out at, at, yep. at some kind of work event type thing. But we get to see each other's family through the oh, internet yeah. and you see them grow up and you and you look at them and you're looking at birthdays. And I'm like, the way I don't know if your mind works this way, but the way my mind works is the first time I like if you're like, oh, I have kids. The first time I see them is how I always see them. If mm. I met your daughter when she was 16, she's always going to be 16 to me. She'd be 32 now. I'm like, she's 16. Yeah. Uh, when she yeah. was four, they're always four. And I'm just like, Oh my God, your kids are getting so big. And I'm like, it's so crazy because through the internet, it's like, a they were six. Now they're eight. I'm like what, what happened? I'm like, well, I mean, life's growing a lot in like two years, like yeah. every yeah, day, right. I'm them, but you don't see them every day. So it's like boom, 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 the explosion of the growth and uh, the matrisms and, and, and the mannerisms that they carry. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a it's an awesome, neat thing uh, when you're have Internet friends and you watch people grow up through the Internet. It's such a oh, totally it's an insane yeah. prism to look at a family of people that like you like and you care about. Like, man, these it kids is. don't even know I'm alive, but I know them. I know what they're yeah. into. Their dad mm-hmm. talks about them. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? It's such a weird. That's a weird thing. That is that is talk about the Internet. That's a weird thing, because, again, back in the day, that wouldn't happen. Right. You'd no. be in your town if you didn't see him at the local soccer thing or at the Acme, you wouldn't know those kids. You'd be like, "Oh well, Jason, you know, I worked with him one time. He lives over there. I, I wrote him a letter. You know, he's got two kids. I don't know what they look like. I don't know their names. See them five years later, and you, you know, my goodness, your kids have grown because you have none of that inter kind of kind of in in between moments yeah. of seeing oh that them at that soccer game three years ago or whatever." That kind of sets the stage. Yeah, kids are kids are like the a uh, time machine. Yep. They really are, and you you watch as they progress. You know, even if it's not your own kids, but other kids, and you watch how fast that happens. And it's a it's a stark reminder that we are all just getting older. It's just <laughs> <laughs> the reality. Yeah, my, my people. You know, again, I do talk about my daughter a lot, so people always ask me about it. I'm like, well, now she doesn't even care about me anymore. You know what I mean? Like, she yeah, got a license. Yeah. She's got a car. You know, all the things that I, I obviously don't want to have to do anymore. Like, I don't have to take her to the beach. I don't have to sit in the sand in the sun if I don't want to. Like, it, it's <laughs> funny because kids don't realize it until they get older. that like, and especially with her being an only child, she doesn't have any siblings. So I always took her around other kids. Like, I'd always have like five mm-hmm. or six kids with me. I would borrow people's vans so I could take four or five other kids to the park oh, and their parents yeah. be like, oh my God, please take them. You know, thank great. you. You know, and I'm sitting there and, and I'm looking at her and I'm like, you know nobody does this, right? Like people don't take pick up extra kids, but I would do that for you because you're a, you're a single kid. And I want you to have that experience. Yeah. I want you to have friends. I want you to have. And I was like, I, I don't want to do any of this. I don't. I don't want to do any. <laughs> I'm doing it for you. you I'm I'm yeah. a, a whale. Do you think that I want to be out here throwing you balls in the hot sun so you can get batting practice? I don't. I really don't. You, you think I want to walk two and a half miles to the water? 
at Wildwood so you could go make punk sand castles that aren't even fun. I don't. I don't. But I, I would do it. I'd do it for you. So uh, I think there's a part that that does. I think there's uh, probably yeah. a part that does. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know. I, 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 again, man, I, I'm bad with these kids. Baby. Look, so uh, again, yeah. Uh, the kids when they get with me, the, I'll tell you secret. See, it's late in the show now. We'll find out who actually listens if somebody yells at me. So when I when I I would take a whole bunch of kids with me, right? What I would call it is a preemptive strike, and I would tell their parents too. So when you get in my car, I pluck the kids in the forehead. They, they come to my car, they put their head down, I pluck them. They get in the car. I hit you for no reason when the day started. You didn't do anything wrong. Do not act up because I hit you for nothing. So if you get out here and act crazy, <laughs> I will hit you. <laughs> Your parents know I will hit That's you. That's a preface. Oh, it's a yes. preface. Yeah. And, and it's so funny now because now that Leah's older, she fully understands because like when she meets bad kids, she plucks them. And then she's like, it zaps them right out. She's like, because you don't want to beat a kid. You don't want to hit a kid. But she's like, just doing that sets their mind to, oh, he might actually hit me. <laughs> their mind. So when we go places, I remember one time we went to, um, I took her and her friends to go to swimming. And I told them, I was like, oh, I'm going to take you to McDonald's afterwards, and then I'll take you guys home. And, you know, once you tell a kid something, uh-huh. you done told them, right? Yep. And they, yep. they were all like four. And um, the kid's dad was like, oh, you know, bring them back home. Bring Lee over. I'm, I'm barbecuing. You know, we'll, uh, just bring them back home so you, we can eat. And I was like, all right, guys, uh, we're, we're just going back to the house. Your dad's cooking, so he told us me to bring you back to eat. You told us we were going to McDonald's. Your dad's lying. He's not taking McDonald's. And I'm like, if I pull this car over, everybody in this car is getting beat. And Leah looked at them. She's like, he hit you for no reason. My dad is not playing. Just stop. He, he, we're on the highway. Don't do it. And they all sat there. They all sad. They fell asleep in the car. And we got there. I was like, now you now you tell these kids why they didn't get their McDonald's because I was going to take them. And their dad told them, like, why are y'all yelling at him? I was like, hey, look, look, I'm just saying. I didn't have to do nothing, but if we have to strike more, they, they, you know, that sets some kids straight. So there's any parents out there, you know what I mean? Like I said, when they lose, you, wow, that, that's nothing. But I mean, to them, like, it's, yeah. it's, it's shocks, startle enough, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Shocks their system. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that's one of my that's one of my pro parent tips that's going to be in my book, How I Raised a Ninja. Pluck them. Love it. That might be like, love it. Pluck them. <laughs> Yeah, talk talk to Jeff Jarvis. He'll he'll tell you how to how to publish and, and find an agent for the book. Uh, I'm sure I will. He can make that work for you. Uh, Owen, such a great time hanging out with you. I'm so happy that we got the chance to to catch up a little bit and talk a little bit about tech. I learned something, you know, a few things new about you that I didn't know before. Thank you for telling me about what what tech was like when you were younger. That's awesome. I appreciate. Thanks you. for having me on. I apologize for making this probably the worst episode to talk about tech possible, but I did that <laughs> on purpose. I'm trying to ruin and tank this show because again, you're out here with your high falutin, high fancy cameras. Okay, you're trying to be like me. You're trying to steal my identity, and I won't have it. So the least I could do is come in here and ruin this episode for the you, people. And, and you, you know, everyone who's watching this, write him an angry email. Tell him if he ever does anything like this again, you're hopping off. You're not subscribing. Hello. <laughs> You Tell him about himself. Make Jason understand that he can't get away with this. He can't do it. Look at that boat. Look at that natural boat. Ooh. Look at it. It's amazing. You uh, know what you basically did, Owen? You what? came onto my show and you binked me I'm, on the forehead. That's, that's basically what, what you did. That's, that's, hey, look, look. I know, see now you see now you see what I'm talking about. I appreciate you having me on. You know. I appreciate you. Ask me on anything else too. I'll do anything. Just ask me. I'm here for you. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not busy. I'm, I'm here for Thank you. Thank you, Doctor O and JJ Stone. Appreciate you. Where do you want to send people if people want to find all the stuff you're doing? IQMC.com is still the best thing to do. Uh, and if you're into tech, I'm trying so hard to be consistent with my tech show. I really yeah. am. But in the world of technology, sometimes it's so boring. And I, again, I try to make it fun. But uh, yeah. if you go on the YouTube, uh, I at IQMZ. Anyway, go to IQMZ.com. It's on there. I do a show there randomly. I'm trying to do it. I believe in myself. I'm going to do it. I'm trying I to believe like in you too. Rock. Thank you, Owen. Appreciate thank you. you. Huge thank you to our guest, Owen J.J. Stone. Always great to get to catch up with him. And things do often veer into the realm of family and technology when I talk to him. It's just we're in very similar paths in our life, I suppose. Uh, 
All things Texploder can be found at the one place in the web that you really need to know about, Texploder.com. You can find everything you need there. Texploder podcast actually premieres every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. You can get that link from Texploder.com to go out to the YouTube channel uh, where that premiere happens. But yes, it, it you know it'll appear in the audio podcast feeds publishing uh, later that day as well. Texploder patrons get exclusive access to the live pre-recordings of these interviews, as well as exclusive pre-show hangouts each and every week before the show premieres. How's that? Also, ad-free shows, early access to my YouTube videos, a Discord community, and more. And we do offer the chance to be an executive producer of this show, a real special spot in my heart anyways. You happen to also get a Texploder t-shirt when you do that. Just like this week's executive producers, Bill Rudder, Jeffrey Maraccini, John Cuny, Taylor Sunderhaas, and WPVM 103.7 in Asheville, North Carolina. Thanks to you all for your deep support of this show. Patreon.com slash Jason Howell. Thanks again to our guest, Owen J.J. Stone. Thanks to you for watching and listening. I'm Jason Howell. See you next time on another episode of the Texploder Podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye.